Oh, wow. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Oh my God, I forgot to start off with <laughs> what's going on, awesome people. All right, I, I am definitely struggling if I don't even start the program the way that I normally do. Whew, that's weird. Well, anyways, let me let me restart. What's going on, awesome people? Welcome to another episode of Awesome People Instagram Live. My name is Iman Hushman. I feel like at this point, a lot of you have been you know, hearing my voice and seeing everything that I'm doing. Uh, a little bit more than what you would like. I'm I'm starting to look even more tired and tired, uh, but just know that deep down inside there is no tiredness. It's nothing but excitement and just and our happiness and um, I don't know. I'm just looking forward to this. Like every single day, there's new people that are joining the Unite and Conquer Azadi Festival Ambassador Group, Ally Group, vendors, sponsors. It's pretty amazing you know it's just pretty cool to kind of see all these great people coming together and um making shit happen so it's beautiful thank you all for joining tonight these awesome people instagram lives are really an opportunity for me to uh shine a spotlight on people that have been shining a spotlight on uh the revolution so far so it's kind of like double spotlighting that we're working on and um i've been doing my best to introduce all the ambassadors and performers and um, trying to catch up with all of them because there's so many amazing people. And so tonight is going to be um, Donya Zirak Sari, who was actually one of the first people that agreed to be a part of this program. She immediately said yes, even before I had a flyer or anything out. It was just through a conversation and she said, I'm there. Um, and I'm very grateful for that. And um, Donya is originally from the Houston area, well, originally, uh, Dunya is a Baha'i refugee from Iran. She moved to the U.S. in 2007 with a mechanical engineering degree from UNM. She has worked as a project manager for top corporations. She created the acclaimed film The Ticket and authored the memoir Tehran to Miami, shedding light on Iranian life and, per and the persecution of minorities. And um, I actually saw the ticket a couple months ago, or maybe a month ago, um, and it was great. Uh, I haven't read Tehran to Miami yet, so that's my fault. I apologize, Donya John. But I was actually introduced to Donya about a year ago, before the revolution even happened. Um, you know, everything that, you, that she's doing right now, she didn't just wake up last September and started doing this. She's been doing this for a long, long time. Um, and... Um, She's been actively educating the Western audiences about Iranian culture and the oppressive regime for quite some time. And as a delegate spokesperson for the Iranian American community in Houston, she supports the ongoing revolution led by Mahsa Jina Amini. She also hosts Radio 021, uniting the Persian community for a free Iran. And I had the pleasure of being a guest on that program. Her and her team uh, down there have done an incredible job of of having a, a radio station in the Persian language that is consistently um, keeping people abreast to everything that's happening in the community, which of course nowadays is primarily all about the woman life freedom revolution. Enough about me. Let's bring on the lovely Donya. You know her now. She's an awesome person indeed. Three, two, one. Pah. Hi, there. Hi, Donia John. How are you? Durud. Good, good. Houston, good. we have no problem. Donia's here. <laughs> <Just kidding. laughs> kind of funny to say that when you actually live in Houston. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I like I like the earrings. Yes, thank you. Very nice. You you you're making the awesome people episode very fancy schmancy. I'm here looking like a peasant here. You know, sorry. I woke up like this, Imanja. <laughs> <laughs> I woke up in a Bugatti. <laughs> or not. Whichever. Um, anyway, it's good to see you, Azam. Thank you so much for uh, joining. And uh, appreciate you being one of the ambassadors, one of the OGs, one of the original first hand up type of ambassadors. Uh, so thank you for, for believing uh, in what we were creating. Um, but for those, we, we'll get to Azadi Festival in a second. Why don't you kind of tell people a little bit about yourself, your upbringing. Uh, if people watched the episode of Countdown that you were on a month ago, they got to know you a little bit. Now we have a little bit more time and we get to kind of go a little bit deeper into your story. So give us a little background about yourself. First of all, no, 
Nobody has to thank me for being a part of the Azadi Festival. It is my honor. I don't feel like I'm doing anybody a favor. I feel like you guys are doing me a favor by having me on the team. It's it's awesome. Um, I, I'm, I'm really glad that I have the opportunity to be a part of it. Um, a little bit about me. I was born and raised in Tehran, Iran, and um, I grew up in a, a Baha'i Muslim family. And uh, I... I studied both religions and as I wanted to have something to rely on, I chose the Baha'i faith, knowing that there is a possibility, a great possibility of me never um, getting into a university, having a job, and life's going to be even harder for me. So the same year that uh, we actually, um, I was I was going to take the entrance test to get to the university was the first year that United Nation was like pushing back on Iran a lot and saying the Islamic Republic a lot and saying that, you know, you're not treating the Baha'is as a citizen. And, and the Islamic Republic was like, no, they, they have always been able to go and take the entrance test. So we did take an entrance test and believe it or not, people who were in their 70s were taking the entrance test just because now they were said, they were told that like, you can. So I think Islamic Republic was just doing a very good count of like how many Baha'is are out there. And since we don't lie um, about the, our religion, um, we, we all wrote like we chose other as religion and we wrote Baha'i. And so I was rejected, as you see in the movie Ticket, I was rejected because of my uh, religion. I wanted to study physics and then uh, after that study astronomy. Uh, so my heart was shattered. And uh, soon after that, my family decided to pack up and leave. I only knew, I only had like two weeks to say goodbye to very limited number of people because it was a hush-hush thing. We couldn't really tell people that we're leaving and why. Um, or they could like stop us. So I spent 15 months in Turkey as a religious refugee and came to US, initially entered uh, New Mexico because I have a lot of family there, studied engineering at the University of New Mexico, became a mechanical engineer. Then I started um, there, I did a lot of research for renewable energy and sustainable technology, which I loved and I'm still deeply passionate about. And then I came to Texas, started working the midstream downstream, and now I'm at Microsoft. I'm a technical program manager. I build data centers for Microsoft and I couldn't, I couldn't be happier. That's, that's beautiful. Let me, um, I want you to take me back to um, that period of the entrance exam. I mean, it's so cool that you have that, uh, the film that you have, the ticket where you kind of get a perspective of how it was when you uh, went through that. But t tell us how in words that you felt at that moment where you're like, you literally have to leave your country because that country uh, or, the, or the people that are running the country are not welcoming you in your own country. Like I just, because it's such an unimaginable and painful experience to even hear about and you experienced it. So what can you tell us about that time? Uh, um, I remember walking there with one of my good friends. She's Muslim and she, she was very shocked. I mean, I, when you hold the paper, it, it literally across, across of it in red says rejected. And I wish I had kept it because um, I often want to go back and look at it. it. It gives me a lot of power that I was rejected because it built me to who I am. Um, I felt like my my dreams were, were crushed, but soon after that, I realized I don't I don't need that uh, education to do well for my community. So in my book, actually, I mentioned. Um, that I gathered a bunch of Baha'is that were reject rejected from different ages and we started partnering up because um, I said, yeah, okay, they didn't close the libraries on us. We can still go to library and ed educate ourselves. So there, I soon realized it's a thirst for knowledge. It's not like I want a degree, right, to get a job. It was a thirst for knowledge. So I started reading all these thick physics books and just teaching myself about physics and often wondering, why are these physics books like 50 years old? Are things haven't changed since 50 years ago? So it wasn't, I take things like that as a the reje rejection like that or any rejection in my life as a, as a point that, okay, now I, I'm going to be better. So um, there is a, there was a positive thing in it, but unfortunately there is still a lot of Baha'is in prison. You know, the, the, the fact that you can't go to a university or have a job is just, 
that's just that's just easy stuff we deal with but the fact that they burn your store or they kill you or they torture you they break your arms and legs and kill, keep you in uh you know um uh, you know prison for 10 years for no reason no trial whatever and then they add another 10 years on top of it it's it's really sick what 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 happens to the bahais in iran no, it's, a, it's as inhumane as you could imagine i want you to tell me where you think you got this um this fire that burns inside of you and how like in a situation like that you're like they're not going to st st stop me from educating i'm going to go find other ways like is this something that like maybe your mom or your dad was like where where did you you have this strength that i'm just kind of wondering like where it comes from if you know yourself something i'm not gonna brag but something uh that i was organizing an iranian uh event here and a, a few of the iranians that live here that have watched me over the last months they said um you you know leaders are born they're not made and and this guy told me he said you were born to be a leader and it's i feel like just believing in yourself that that is that is what you were born to do is very important so i encourage everybody to 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 acknowledge realize what is their sole purpose on this earth and follow it regardless of what it is don't change yourself try to give to the community like the best version of yourself i feel like so i think it comes from my mom and she was an educator. She was actually, um, uh, during the Shah's time, she was uh, uh, given a scholarship to go to Europe, three different countries, and study uh, how to be a good uh, you know, teacher, educator, and come back. And she had a driver driving her around. She had over 150 cases. Um, she was doing a lot of good for the community that she lived in. And after the revolution, obviously, they asked her to, it might not be obvious for a lot of people, but they did ask her to become a Muslim or um or she would get fired so she had to she was forced to leave just like a lot of other um baha'is that i know especially my family members were either um they were either fired or they were forced to leave or close their business um i have a family member that one day uh, uh left uh the, fa the house with her daughter and as she was coming back to her house just from shopping she um she was stopped by my neighbor and said, don't go to your house. They already took over your house. I mean, imagine that you go to the grocery store to your child and you come back and now you have to find your husband and say, don't go home because they took our house. And, and she was such a wealthy woman and she had to leave from uh, uh, Kerman to Pakistan with $100 in her pocket and lived there for two years before she migrates uh, to, her, to her new destination. So those uh, uh, stories of resilience and um, the fact that my family didn't lie about what they believed in and they did everything else. They went through all this hardship just because they didn't want to you know, lie about their religion. Is this, would you say that all of this is um, the fuel to your fire? I mean, do you just kind of think about all of these individuals that were in those communities at the same time, all those that have gone through all the struggles? Is that why you are so nonstop about this revolution right now? Yeah, it's it's that. And I see the struggles that I have a lot of friends back in Iran still. And, and, and my friends, because of the uh, because of all these issues after the Islamic Republic took over, uh, the brain drain and the, the lack of opportunity, the lack of connection between education and careers. Uh, I see my friends are spread around. So I also see that I see my family, the Baha'i the Baha'i side of it, but I also see the, the non-Baha'i side of it, the, the LGBTQ community. I see, I see my own friends that w are striving to just have a basic life, you know? They have children, they either don't have children because they're just like, well, why are we gonna have kids in this, in this uh, country, right? What's gonna be the future? Or they have a kid and now they're desperate, they're like, we wanna leave. So I want a better Iran for my fellow Iranians, and I want them to stay where uh they most feel comfortable right around around their family with the with the great beautiful culture that we have um yeah i want i want the world to see iran that's another thing <laughs> i want i want there to be peace so 
everybody that always hears it about from me, I want them to have the opportunity to go to Iran as a tourist or an investor and see our beautiful country. That is the day that many of us are longing for. Um, so, you know, you've been very active in, in the Houston community for quite some time, even before the revolution, but especially the last 10 months, so much so that just a couple of nights ago, you actually got a congressional recognition uh, with the Houston uh, Refugee Alliance. Can you tell us, first of all, congratulations. That's pretty Thank awesome. You. Uh, t tell, tell us exactly what this is. So, so I was, um, I w I've been blessed because uh, I guess the personality that I have, people are usually connect with me really quickly. And so I was at this very uh, a beautiful organization called Houston Millennials, ran by Yvonne Sanchez, who's also running for uh, um, city council now. And I wish him all the best because he's an amazing person. He's the same age as I am, and I'm not. An, I'm not a day over 22, by the way. But <laughs> but he, I, I talked to him uh, a month ago, over a month ago, and and his campaign manager was there. I said, guys, we gotta, we gotta have a World Refugee Day. And I was talking to this lady that brought TED Talk here, and they said, okay, let's let's go ahead and do it. What do we do? I said, it's easy. I have connections, and so we made it happen. And I and and it, it just happens that I was at Fox 26 talking about uh, the upsetting uh, story that happened a, a month ago that that three three more people got executed. Now, in Iran, and I saw Congressman Al Green, and he was so upset, he was devastated, and he's such a nice human being. And I told him that I invite you to this event because he is very, very much active in the community, especially with the refugees. And then um, he was actually there to talk about that. So I invited him, and then um, apparently they're in session, Congress is in session this week, so he wasn't able to come. But they are such decent people that they called me last week and they said, we've seen what you're doing for Iran. We've seen what you're doing for the refugee. So uh, so they wanted to recognize and, and, you know, give us a recognition, not just me, but the whole team that put this event together to bring all the refugee settlements. So I was really excited about it. I actually have it here. It's, it's right here. And I, I, I just... I was like, I'm definitely putting this up there, you know. So it was, it was. I know I was, I was, I feel blessed. But it wasn't just me; it was the whole team. So um, I feel really happy about it. Deserved. Appreciate it. Speaking of teamwork, now let's talk a little about Azadi Festival. Um, what is it that drew you to it? Especially because when you and I talked about it, it was over like a month and a half ago. So really, you only had like bits and pieces. Um, what caught your attention? You are so, you who are so busy doing so many things for Iranian revolution and refugee refugees. Uh, Why did you decide to allocate your time and efforts to the Azadi Festival? Well, first of all, I'm sorry if I haven't been as active as other members have been, uh, but um, I think it's unite and conquer um, the essence that y'all have been. I guess what you guys have been uh, putting out there from day one. Uh, so I'm a fan of Unite and Conquer. And way before that, just like you said, I knew you. I know your ethics. I know your intentions. I know your personality. So if I get a chance to work with you, I, I, it's my honor. And not just you, your team is wonderful. Seriously, I'm not saying this. I, I want everybody to know I don't gain anything from saying all this stuff. But when somebody's, to me, when somebody's ethical, somebody's um, respectful to their team, I want them to get the... Uh, get the spotlight and and people know how it is. Maybe they want to work with you in the future. Why not? Um, so yeah, and then and then it promotes the culture, not just the revolution, but the culture, and it brings people together from all around. Hopefully from Canada, from all around US. I hope people even come from Europe, yeah. and and hopefully we make it an annual thing, just like you said. And and it's it's not just for Iranians. That's the beauty of it too. Non Iranians can come and also enjoy it. So I'm all in. That's amazing. <laughs> and you're coming all the way from Houston and you're gonna be having your book there so people can get to know you and also get a copy of Tehran to Miami. What better than from the author itself? You know, that's gonna be great to have you uh in person. That's really it's really greatly appreciated. Uh yeah, so twelve hours of programming for those who might not know what Azadi Festival is. Click the link in my bio and or go to azadi-festival.com. Um, so when was the last time you were you were in Iran, Tonya Jun? 2019. 
2014 was the last time I went to Iran and I went there to record the videos that I I made a film uh, the ticket on um, I was I also went there to say goodbye to my to my family that was there especially my grandma because she was uh, older and I knew that after making that film I was no longer able to go back so it was very heartbreaking um, to go there for the last time but um, but hopefully it's not hopefully it's not the last time <laughs> yeah it was it was the most recent time but not the last time so speaking of which once iran is free and it will be uh yes. what's what's the first thing that you look forward to doing when you go back to iran where are you going i'm going to shiraz and i'm going to have fun with an ice cream <laughs> immediately um i just want to go hug my friends really i mean I just want to go hug my friends. I just want to go and this morning my aunt from Iran sent me a picture of our old building uh, in Satakhan Street and um, he, I stopped and looked at it. I was walking the dogs. I was like, I stopped and looked at it and I was like, oh my God, that's our building. That, that's where I was born and raised. And um, there's so much that I can do. I mean, there is the food, there is the culture, and something else is that as a, as a girl growing up in Iran with three older brothers, and you know how it was, I wasn't able to like freely travel, and traveling wasn't like that bold during that time. So I didn't really get to see my own country. So that, that's, something, that's something that I regret, but then there was nothing to do because I was a teenager and I was going to school and I, was, I didn't have the opportunity. So I encourage people, if they are in Iran, go see Iran. Um, and I really miss that. I think I have, to, I have to go to Iran as a tourist and just see, see my own country. That's beautiful. Um, it's so funny because one of our other ambassadors, I think it was Rubin, but I asked him the same thing, what you would do. And he was like, I just want to go and have follow the uh I, so, so the two of you need to go together and he wants to go to darvan you go to shiraz maybe the two of you need to do like a little tasting yes. of, of but the day. thing the thing is we have an amazing ice cream shop here okay it's called last call and they're only open on fridays saturdays and sundays at night uh, shiraz, and they, yeah, have, they have fun today <laughs> 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 I had to do that. I had to do that. You had to. I know. I know she does the I know into type me going I'm not carde anyone in the room. If they're watching. They have to wake up early for me to watch this. Come on. Napping right now. <laughs> but no, he was the guy, every time I go there, I always say Khoda Padam, but that's what I'm going to for for providing us the ice cream and follow it because Pakistani people have the same thing, follow the ice cream, but it's not like the follow the Shirazi, you know, so. Yeah. Well, yeah. well, guess what? For those who are coming to Azadi Festival, we are definitely going to be having some some Persian ice cream and I don't want to give away all the secrets, but there's going to be a nice Persian menu from desserts to, you know, entrees to, it's going to be like some good stuff. So people are going to come to Tyson's Virginia, a little bit of Iran and different parts of Iran will be represented both from a food standpoint and of course music standpoint and of course dance and of course poetry. I mean, for people like me who's never lived in Iran, like we're just doing everything we can to bring Iran over here. So that's yes. you know, yes. our dream. Uh, listen, Iran is going to be there because we are going to be there. Unite and Conquer is going to be there. Okay. So Iran is already there Hello. and i and i wish nothing for the world but a world with peace no borders and no refugee camps this this week i mean all i can think about is refugees and i just want and, and a lot of us here are refugees or we're the first generation second generation and third generation and i really wish the world no borders no um you know i'm not even thinking like politics i'm just thinking humanity yeah. uh nobody has to get killed because they're trying to cross a border nobody has to get killed and displaced just because a country is trying to expand their land uh all of that i mean it, it's so heartbreaking what's still happening in syria and ukraine and um you know uh, the ones that are here are lucky but the ones that are there i mean i my heart goes out to them for sure sure um I have a question. What does a free Iran, you kind of alluded to it right now, but in closing, what does a free Iran look like to you? I want you to describe, close your eyes and describe the ideal free Iran for you. So, 
So a free Iran is an Iran that we can we can all live in peace and harmony, regardless of our gender uh, preference, our religion, our beliefs, our uh, education. I want a I want a free Iran to be open to tourism, new investments, new technologies, exports, new technologies. Uh, since I'm on the technology side, I always wish that for my country because so many of uh, great Iranian, intel intelligent Iranians had to migrate out of the country just because they didn't have the opportunity there. Um, a free Iran is going to be shining for the rest of the world. It's going to be exporting culture, uh, delicious food, uh, great products such as Iranian uh handmade Persian rugs or or much more like pistachios and copper and so much more and it's going to welcome the world to come and see and enjoy and learn yeah and until that happens Azadi festival will be exactly that open to the world Iranians coming together non-Iranians celebrating the best that our culture has to offer well, Dunya Jun, all I got to say is I can't wait to go to Iran and enjoy that photo day with you. Hello, whether it's in Shiraz with you or in Tehran with uh, with Ravin, uh, it's going to be a great experience and we get to go travel the world together yeah. or travel our country together as well. Yes. I think we have a lot of ambassadors who will join you as well. Yeah. Yeah, and you know what? People can come to the uh, Azadi Festival not just so they can enjoy uh, all the great things, the bazaar, the vendors, the music, the live entertainment, the ambassadors that are there that are coming from all around the place. They're, they're not just going to enjoy that. They're also going to network because our Iran is going to be free. And when it is free, we need to be ready to just say, okay, I know so-and-so. We're going to start this business together in Iran, and we're going to make our Iran a more beautiful place. Let the politicians do their, their thing, but then we as investors and, and artists and, and, and creators, we also need to build our country, not because it's ruined right now, but People that are there, they need our help. So we need to network now and use these conferences and, and festivals to get to know each other, right. coordinate the beautiful future that we want for our country. That's right. It's Farana, first of all, perfectly stated. Uh, we had this one individual, I don't want to give the name, but it's a talented artist. Um, and, uh, you know, they, they don't live in a DC area. And we, we really wanted this individual to come and be one of the speakers. And, you know, they already, you know, they weren't going to charge a performance fee, but they were like, Iman, like, it's hard for me to figure out how to cover all the costs of coming yeah. uh, because everybody who's a part of this is covering their own costs, you know? And I told them, I was like, listen, I'm so sorry that we can't cover it, but there's so much value in this network that we're creating and we need to strengthen this network. Like right now, you're part of the ambassadors and everybody is welcome to join the ambassadors, but this is almost 40 awesome people that you can work together you can support each other you can you know next next time donia when you have an event you now have 40 people yeah. that like an army are going to stand behind you in whatever that you're doing because we know that our efforts are all pure it's all for a free run or whatever it is is to help our respective communities so so there, there's so much value that that's priceless to me you know what i mean and so i feel like i feel like if there's people watching and that they're considering to be a part of Azadi Festival, just look at what Dunya just said, like how important it is just to meet so many people that are like-minded, that care about the community, that care about our country. And, and that's why I just know it's going to be a great day on July 3rd. And I'm so grateful. I have no here. doubt. Yeah. I look forward to it. I'm going to see you in person for the first time and a bunch of people. And uh, I look forward to it. I'm sure it's going to be fun. 12 hours of uh, uniting, I would that's say. Right. Donijun, where can people in the meantime, if they can't come in person, where can they buy your books or, or uh, and see your movie? They can go into my website that is in the bio. Uh, I actually just launched a new website. They can see the, uh, uh, it's, it's still a little under construction, but they can watch the movie uh, under, uh, under the tabs that is on there. And then they can also get the book. Uh, Kindle is very affordable. Uh, I, I sometimes even give books to people for free just because I want them to, to read it, to, to understand what's going on in our culture and in our, in our country. 
and uh, learn about our culture. So yeah, they can just go to my bio and uh, learn about me, contact me, and uh, and reach out if they ever need anything. Yeah. Yeah, Dunya Juna is a breath of fresh air, so I highly recommend you do connect with her, you do follow her content. She does a great job for not just the Houston community, but just all over. So, Dunya Hassan Abrashi, and we look forward to seeing you in 11 days. Thank you. Thank you. I look forward to it. Bye. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that was Dunya Zirakstari, and there was a question below about how to, who to speak to about being a part of the festival. You can click the link in my bio. There are six ways that you can be a part of the program. You can become an ambassador, which is what Dunya Jan is. You can, which is an ambassador, basically, you become one of the organizers. There's really, that's, that's as simple as it gets. You're planning, you're ideating, you're strategizing, you're giving your feedback, you're doing whatever you can to make this program uh, amazing. You, you get to give feedback. This is what we should have. We shouldn't have this. Let's add this. Let's add that person. Uh, I know this person that can do that person, that kind of stuff. Or you can become an ally. An ally is that you are gonna basically help promote this event, spread the word to as many people locally and globally, because this entire 12 hour event is gonna be live streamed. So you don't have to be too bummed that you're gonna be missing out in person. Of course, nothing beats in person, but we're doing a really, really high caliber production of live stream. So it's not just gonna be one little camera in the corner where it's boring. It's gonna be dynamic. It's gonna be interactive. It's gonna be engaging. If anything, you guys are gonna be able to see a very cool behind the scenes perspective, you know? So that's, we got a little surprise for you guys who are gonna be joining online. So go to azadi-festival.com. You can click the button to subscribe to be reminded. Uh, and um, yes, yeah, so ambassador, ally, you can become a sponsor of the program. If you're a business owner and you wanna support this program, you support us, we support the hell out of you. Um, you can do a financial contribution if you're able to financially support it. The more funds that we have, obviously, the more production, the more capabilities, the more everything. You know, in an ideal situation, I would love to be able to cover the cost of all of these individuals that are flying over here, driving over here, paying for a hotel, paying for Airbnbs. Like, it really, really upsets me that I don't have enough money to be able to help cover all these things because they are already sacrificing so much of their time, their their effort, they're sacrificing. Um, opportunities you know they're doing it all for us for us not for me not for unite and conquer for us so an iranian the community the people who love the iranian culture and that's commendable and like they shouldn't have to spend money out of their pocket to do that you know it should be it should be the rest of the community that says hey thank you for creating this I'm not able to do anything but support it financially. I'm gonna go buy tickets. I'm gonna tell my friends in DC. I'm gonna do become a sponsor. I'm gonna do whatever. Get creative on how you can help if you're interested in helping. But if you are interested in helping, there's many ways. So that's ambassador, that's financial contribution, that's ally. If you're in a DC area, you can become a vendor and be a part of the Iranian bazaar. We wanna be able to promote Iranian businesses, Iranian artists, Iranian creatives. That's what the bazaar is all about. Uh, we have an online store, which you can click the link in the bio, and it's got beautiful Azadi Festival merchandise. Thanks to our friends at um, Retail Therapy Clinic. It's so amazing what Mo Namozi has done. Almost within 24 hours, he created an incredible online store. Hats, t-shirt, water bottle, amazing branding. So go and check it out. Um, and as Don Yujun just mentioned right now, help someone come to the festival. I, I didn't want to give the name of the person, but there's somebody with immense amount of talent. And like, um, well, I can't just do, I can't favor anybody. The point is that with more money, we can help out all these artists and individuals that are trying to preserve our culture to come and do something amazing. So uh, I think I covered everything. Ambassador, ally, sponsor, contributor, merch store. That's it. Buy tickets. Come join. And uh, that's it for now. Uh, and uh, hope you have a wonderful rest of the evening. Thank you again, Donya Jun, for being a part of the program and being an ambassador. Much love. Shabbat Shalom. Be'omide. Al-Zaidi.